Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah, so good to see you. Hey, um, there are so many songs that we sing at Christmas time. We've sung some of them here tonight. Uh, but um, some of these songs are just holiday songs, right? Some of them are religious songs. Some of them mix those things together. One of those holiday songs that's been in my mind this year is this one. It's the most, sing it with me, wonderful time of the year. Right. And I don't really know the rest of the words. I would probably sing them wrong. And my, you know, if I, we went on with that song, but... There's something about that song that just gets, it just gets at it, right? That there is something that's like magical about this time of year. And it's hard exactly to explain. I mean, you could explain some of it because it might be like family and friends and presents and food and even this, but there's just something in the air this time of year. If you were with us last Sunday, I did my best to get rid of all of that wonder at Christmas when we took this Christmas quiz. And if you weren't here with us, here's what happened last week. We debunked all of these myths about Christmas that you thought were true that aren't actually true. And uh, we did this quiz with our church, and um, i just say it, most of you got most of them wrong, right? You thought you knew these things, and I was trying to prove we maybe don't know the Christmas story as well we think uh, we do. And so we uh, saw things like this, that the wise men didn't actually go to a stable to see the baby Jesus, um, that there was no star over the stable, that there actually wasn't probably even a stable, and that angels don't sing. Yeah, you can see how bad that was, right? Those things aren't ever said in the Bible. So um, I've been getting a lot of grief for this since doing that, (laughs) particularly from my wife, who thinks I've now ruined Christmas, and um, she put this post on social media. Maybe some of you saw it. She says, thanks basically to my husband, my nativity now looks like this. Um, (laughs) I just want to say it looks like a biblical nativity is what that looks like to me, right? No, there's just like Mary, Joseph, the baby. There's still a stable there, so made out of wood. But um, I just want to say I did not actually do this. I didn't do this uh, to our nativity at home, but apparently my daughters actually listened to the messages, which was in kind of encouraging to me. And so the shepherds are somewhere else in the house, and the wise men are traveling over on the other bookshelf to get to the place where baby Jesus was born. They're sort of spread out around the house. Um, But since this is being recorded and is on record, I do want to say, I don't think any of those details are actually that important, okay? Just to go on the record to say that, you know what is important at this time of year? It's what we're here to uh, to do uh, together tonight. What is important is what that baby was doing by coming to earth. What Jesus Christ was seeking to accomplish by coming to this earth. And you know what that baby was seeking to accomplish? That baby was bringing peace. He was bringing peace to this world. So let me talk about peace just for a few moments tonight. How does peace sound to you? Like, I don't know the week that you had or the year that you had, but um, there are sometimes when I do weddings here, and uh, often when we get the two, uh, the couple that's up here and they're facing each other after all of the plans and the preparation and all the things getting ready for this day, and they stand here finally, and I'm here, and they're looking at each other, I might say something to them, just, just, just take a breath and just enjoy these moments. And maybe for some of you, you've been in a year, you've been in a week, you've been in a month where you just need to take a breath tonight. And you're just saying, I need peace. Peace sounds really good to me. Peace may be from sickness. Anybody been dealing with influenza A, B, RSV, strep throat? I ain't even going to mention that other one. But we don't wanna, the, the one that is not named, we don't talk about, right? That's been going through our, our house. We've been dealing with that. Anybody like some peace from the to-do list? The demands the stuff that has to get done. I mean, even this time of year, it's so, it can be so absolutely amazing. Many of you have your family that's here. You have friends that you're gonna celebrate with. This is exciting, but it also means you've gotta cook, you've gotta do the list, you've gotta clean the house, you've gotta organize the stuff, you've gotta buy the presents, you've gotta wrap the presents. There's just always to do, and we live in this world today where there is just a lot of busyness, and there's a lot of running around, and there's a lot of stuff to get done, and a lot of people have demands on us as well. So some peace from all of that, the demands, the expectations, that would be good. Maybe some peace from, I don't know, broken relationships, things that are just messed up and not the way that they're supposed to be. It would be nice to just have some, some rest from that and a sense of calm, like, like this is better. Maybe some peace for some of you, peace from noise. I don't know about you, maybe you can tell me this if you're older than I am, but it seems like the older and older I get, stuff just gets louder and louder, right? Are you ever just like, I just need some peace and quiet, just leave me alone? Sometimes my wife will be like, where, where, where are you at? And you're like hiding in the bedroom or something like that. Like, well, there's a lot of voices around here, right? And you just need some peace from the noise sometimes. And then maybe this. Some of you are here tonight and you're like, you know what I need peace from? I need peace from myself. I need peace from my mistakes, from my failures, from my inadequacies, from my 
not exactly doing the things I know I should be doing or doing things I know I shouldn't be doing, I, I, I would like some peace from just the turmoil that's inside of my own heart. I have some good news for you tonight. Those angels, when they announced to the shepherds out on the countryside after this baby was born, they said this to them in Luke chapter 2 and verse 14. They said, glory to God in the highest heaven. This is about the glory of God. The incarnation, the birth of Jesus that we celebrate tonight, never get this wrong. This is about the worth and the glory and the majesty of God, the creator of this universe. And that thing that he did in Bethlehem was about his glory. But also, you know what it's about? It's about something for you and for me. And on earth, for us, peace to those on whom his favor rests. That baby that was born in Bethlehem was born to bring you peace, to bring pre peace into your life. But what kind of peace was it that this baby came to bring to us? Well, what kind of peace do you think it was? Um, did that baby come to bring us political peace? Which would be really, really nice if it was that, right? Because if you're still following what's going on in Ukraine and Russia, that's, that's not good. I know it's not front page news all the time anymore, but that's really bad. That is not peaceful at all and it is not good. Um, there's other world powers that you're always like, what's going down with North Korea right now? What's going down with China? How, how's that going? And then within our own country, if you follow the news at all, it's not a lot of harmony, right? There's a lot of divisions that are there. So did this baby that came, did he come to bring us political peace? Well, at least not initially, because if you were coming to bring political peace, I don't think you'd come as a baby. You'd probably come as a king or a ruler, right? You come into the palace to rule and to reign over things, but a, a baby comes. Babies don't do much for bringing political peace to us. So at least initially, that's not what it is. What about circumstantial peace? Did that baby come to bring us circumstantial peace, like um, peace from the things in our lives that are not the way they should be, uh, peace from the troubles that we have, the difficulties that we face, the sicknesses that we face? Did that baby come to bring circumstantial peace? Well, no, because again, um, I don't know, babies don't do a lot to relieve the circumstantial pressures and stresses that you have in your life, right? Right? Babies are wonderful. They're beautiful. They're amazing. We've had some recently born into our church family here, and that's awesome. You have one talking to you right now. It's amazing, right? We love that baby right now, right? But babies don't relieve those things. Babies, they cry, and they have needs. And so when God is born as a baby, the baby tells us he didn't come primarily to bring us circumstantial peace, relief from our circumstances. What about relational peace? Maybe that's it. Maybe he came to make all of our relationships right, to reconcile all those relationships and make all of those things good. Well, not exactly that either because Jesus, when he grew to be a man, would say things like, I've come to pit father against mother and son against, son against mother and parents. And so sometimes some of you know that, that are here, that you've come to follow Jesus. You realize this actually has made a lot more conflict because my, my parents, my family members, they don't agree with it. They don't believe God exists and so it makes it harder. So Jesus didn't exactly come to bring us relational peace either. What kind of peace did Jesus come to bring us? You know the peace that that baby came to bring you is a calm assurance that you're right with God. The calm assurance that the God of the universe who created you and made you and made life and knows what life is all about looks down upon you and says, we're good. I have you. I am with you. And your relationship with me is secure so that whatever happens to you in your life, I've got you and I am with, I am with you. Because that baby that, that was born as a baby grew to be a man and that man lived a perfectly sinless life and that man died for you on a cross to pay the penalty for your sin. He substituted himself as God and human for you so that you could come into a relationship with the God who created you so that the Bible says you could have peace with God. Peace with God. And if you have peace with God, the Bible calls it um, reconciliation. If you can be reconciled to God, then whatever else you deal with, whatever else goes on, and, and, and there are some hard things. There are some difficult things that you're going to deal with, you are dealing with in your life right now, that make you long for peace. God says to you, I bring that to you. And a baby that was born to die for you and resurrected from the grave to reconcile you to me. Um, sometimes when you are a, a young child, Right? And maybe you can remember this for those of you that are a little bit older. I know we got a lot of kids that are in here. Kids that are in here, are you listening right now? Um, do any of you ever have a problem with sleeping in your bed at night because you're scared of the dark? I'm going to be honest with you. If you're here part of North Point, I'm your pastor. I was scared out of my mind when I was a kid. 
And it lasted for a long time, longer than it probably should have. I was really scared of the dark, you know? And so um, I, I have five daughters. Various ones of them have been scared of the dark at different times. In fact, I remember when we used to live in Ohio before we moved here, one of our daughters was very young, and uh, she would often come into our bedroom at night. The only problem was she didn't like to wake us up. So I would be sleeping and I would be facing the outside of my bed and I would wake up at like three o'clock in the morning and when I would open my eyes, she would be standing right there <laughs> staring at me. And we're like eye level. And my, my first thought was like, how long have you been standing there? <laughs> and my second thought was, are you gonna kill me? You know, I, I, that's kind of what it felt like. It was, really, it was really creepy, but she was just so kind. She didn't want to wake me up. She's like, I'm just gonna wait till you feel my presence, right? And then you'll wake up and be freaked out and like that's gonna go down. But, but if you're a kid and you're scared of the dark, why is it that you go to your parents' room? Why is it you go into your siblings' room? Why, why do you go into that place thinking, hey, this is going to help me? Because even if you go in there, all the fears you had about what might happen, those could still happen to you. It's still dark, right? All of those things are out there and those things could still happen to you. Why do you go? Because you want presents. Not the Christmas presents you're going to get tonight or tomorrow, but P-R-E-S-E, -E, how do you spell that? C-E, yeah, the C-E one. That one, you want, you want to be with somebody. You want to be with mom, you want to be with dad. You're like, I'll even sleep on the floor as long as I know you're up there, as long as I know you're in the same room. There are two titles that Jesus has given among others at Christmas time. One of those titles is that that baby was called Emmanuel, which means God has come to dwell with us. God with you. And that God who is with us is also called in Isaiah's prophecy, the Prince of Peace. The Prince who is peace. The Prince who brings peace. The Prince who wants to give you peace. The Prince of Peace is also Emmanuel who is with you. And that Prince of Peace who grew to be a man on one occasion, he said this to his followers in John chapter 14. He promised them this right before he died on the cross. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace, as the Prince of Peace, I'm giving that peace to you. I don't give to you as the world gives. So don't let your hearts be troubled. You don't have to be afraid. The darkness might still be there. The politics might not be good. The circumstances might still be messing with you and they might be very difficult. All of your relationships may not be right, but I'm giving you peace with God. Because I am with you. Because I'm going to walk with you through whatever you go through, whatever you're dealing with. I am here and I am, I am with you. The biggest thing you need in your life is a relationship with the God who created you. And that's why Jesus came down. That's what he's doing. That's what we're celebrating at Christmas, that God has come down to me. And he has come down for his own glory and to bring me peace. To bring me peace. Here's the thing that I know about some of you. Some of you are here tonight, and I, and I think, I don't, I don't know who, who, who all this is, but I know some of you are here, and you're like, you know, Jeremy, I, just, I don't think peace is actually possible for me because I don't know that that circumstance is ever going to change, or I've gotten myself into a mess, or I don't think I can have peace because those people are still in my life, and they're difficult, and I don't think that's going to change. And I'm still, when we get done with this night, I'm still going to have to deal with these circumstances and these people, and I still have to live in this world, so I don't think I can have peace. And you know what I would tell you? That's true. If peace is primarily about politics, circumstances, or people, but it's not actually about any of those things. There is a peace that God wants to give to you, and that peace is Jesus Christ himself, the Prince of Peace in your life to transform you and to change you and to give you in your inner being, not just external circumstances, but in your inner being a sense that God is with you, a peace that resides in you because God has come to dwell with you and to be with you. And that kind of peace, nothing can shake that because it's God's peace that he has given to you. That's the peace that Jesus promises to you tonight. That's what Christmas is, the promise of a peace that, well, that can withstand storms and bad circumstances, and difficult people, and troubles, and trials, and difficulties. I know you don't always feel that peace, but that peace is there because God is with you. And so my simple encouragement to you tonight is this in this Christmas season, is to receive the God of peace. God wants to give you a peace that you can find nowhere else, the peace that is Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace himself, and then rest in that peace. You know, um, I I'm just like you. Uh, even this week that I've had this past week, we've, we have been dealing with influenza A in my family. I, I hope we're done. One of our kids burst her eardrum 
and uh, like that's painful. Don't you don't want to do that? Don't sign up for that one. Not good, right? Um, and just a sense, even I'm being honest with you, just a sense that like I love this season. I love what Jesus Christ has done. Reflecting on that, but also feeling just some. Um, I'm a shell. We were like fighting this week, my wife and I. I'm just I, this. I'm going off script here a little bit, but um, <laughs> and she came to first service, so hopefully she's not <clears throat> listening to this one. But all my fault. This is my fault, right? You know. But it just doesn't feel really like peaceful all the time. And so you know what I got to do, what I got to come back to is this. No, what has God said? He said that Jesus is your peace. And you might not always feel like it, and the circumstances might not always be exactly the way they are, but you have a relationship with the God who created you because Jesus Christ came to earth as a baby, and he died and he gave his life for you, and he resurrected from the grave for you, and you can know him. And he does want to bring you that peace. And I know he wants that peace for you as well. So would you receive him? receive his peace. And then for those of you that have trusted in Jesus Christ, and you know that everything that I just said is true, and I didn't, I didn't surprise you with some new amazing truth tonight, would you get some moments with God in the next day or two or even today and just say, Jesus, reveal your peace to me. Help me to rest in your peace. Help me to be quiet with you. And thank you that you have come for me because you know that, right? It is true that Jesus Christ came for the world, but he came for you. And when you trust in him and you let him be your peace, he makes you a son of God. He makes you a daughter of God, and he gives you a family. The God who created this world invites you into his family, and he wants to bring you peace. Receive his peace. Rest in his peace this Christmas season. Would you pray with me?